this is Anna with the paint mixer here, um, guiding you today through our wonderful flower fox painting. So I hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful sunny Saturday, no matter where you are. Um, it's a beautiful day here in Park City, so I hope you can get outside too. Um, but uh, I don't know if some of you have joined these classes before, but basically how it works is I'll be taking you step by step through the painting and in between steps, you guys can rock out, listen to music, dance around your living room or your kitchen, or wherever you are. Well, I just want you guys to have fun and relax and you know, get creative. So before we get started, just a couple um, ground, not, a, not really rules, but just some tips and tricks. So if you uh, have your creativity to go kit, go ahead and open it up. Um, you're going to see a little packet like this, like a little burrito. Um, and you're gonna wanna take your butcher paper, this white paper, and just lay it down over the surface you'll be painting um, to protect whatever table um, or desk you're working at. Also in the middle of that, we have this little cardboard sheet. This is actually our palette. So um, not your traditional looking palette, but this works really well to put your paint on. Also, as far as paint goes, um, we're working with acrylic paint. So it's a good idea to have an apron or maybe a t-shirt you're not too concerned about getting paint on. Um, because if you get this on your clothes and it dries, uh, it's permanent. So just a word of warning. So that's why you definitely want to cover your table in the butcher paper. So also when we're talking about paints, we have a couple different paint options. So you may have received a kit that looks like this. This is our deluxe kit with a whole, whole bunch of colors. Or you may have these little paint pots in our standard kit. So I'll kind of go over um, how we can blend these primary colors to match the deluxe kit, but both color sets work really well um, for this painting. So um, now is a good time to find your paints and to kind of put a little dab of each color onto your palette. So I'll be working from the deluxe kit, but go ahead and put a little dollop of your paint onto your palette. And the colors we're using today are black and white. And I find that the white goes pretty fast. So make sure you have a decent amount of white there. A little bit of black, we don't need too much of that. And the cool thing about this is you're probably gonna have leftover paint. So you can create projects throughout the week. Also colors we're gonna be using um, are Burnt Sienna. You have block it. Also, this vermilion color, it's kind of like a bright orange, good foxy colors. Now, if you have the um, standard kit, you just need to do some red and yellow and we can create those um, oranges and browns a little later. And then um, whatever blues you wanna work with. The blue is gonna be mostly for our background. So go ahead and put a healthy dollop of blue you can do ultramarine and the cobalt if you have the little tubes, or for the little paint pots, the phthalo blue works really great too. So all blues work and are beautiful. Also, um, now is a good time to fill your water cup, whether it's one of these vintage paint mixer cups or just a cup you have laying around with water so that we can clean our brushes in between. And don't forget to find your little napkin. This is awesome for dabbing your brush in between colors so that they stay really bright and vivid. Also, um, you'll be working on probably this size canvas is a little eight by 10, um, but all for, for visual sake, I'll be working on a larger piece, 16 by 20, so you can see it a little better. Also, a couple things to remember, you know, it's not about being perfect. It's about just expressing yourself. So if you are following along, you're like, you know, I just want to finger paint and maybe just do some polka dots and lines. You can do that too. You don't have to do the fox. You can do you. You are the artist. So I trust whatever you do is the correct choice. All right. Also, last thing before we get started, brushes. So we've kind of been experimenting with our favorite kinds of brushes. So you may have um, any of these in front of me. So I have these little, little guys. Um, and these vintage ones that I'll be using, vintage just means well-loved. Or you might have these brand new sparkly blue ones. But uh, any brush that you have, you're going to have a large and a small. 
So the large one I'm going to refer to as the mama and the little guy is the baby. So you can kind of follow along with that. All right. So before we get started, go ahead and put your brushes in your water. This is where they're going to live when we're not painting so that the bristles stay really hydrated and that you don't ruin your brushes because brushes, brushes are very special. Okay. So if you have any um, questions throughout, make sure you add it in the little comment box. And I believe you have to log into YouTube in order to leave a comment. So as you're going along, please don't hesitate to ask questions, but you do have to log into a YouTube account. So if you need to set that up, you can always hop back in um, and you won't miss anything. All right, first step, finding your canvas and your Big Mama brush, getting it uh, pretty wet. We want, we want this to be really wet to start out with. In the example, you can see it's kind of drippy. So in big horizontal strokes with blue and white, covering your entire canvas. Now, if you like drips, you can add more water to make it drippy. But I just want you to have fun covering your entire canvas in blues. So um, don't be afraid to use a lot of paint because you can always get more. <laughs> so this is what the phthalo blue looks like. And if I add some white, it gets a little creamier, a little more like a sky blue. But don't forget to keep dipping your brush in water because you'll notice if you don't, you'll have a harder time filling in the little grooves of the canvas, the little texture on the canvas there. So just go inside to side. This is a nice warm up. Like uh, before we get into the nitty gritty of the fox, this is a nice way to get familiar with the paint and how it, how it reacts. Also, as you're going along, don't forget to cover your side edges. So the whole perimeter of the canvas will be this light blue. And that way, you can hang this right on the wall, no frame required. Although I know Michaels is selling or having a frame sale right now. So if you do wanna get a frame, they're super cheap. And the nice thing about being at home is you could be in your pajamas for all I know. You can be snacking, can be rocking out to your favorite kind of music. So make sure you definitely have tunes. I don't have music, so it's not distracting, but you guys should definitely bump to music. So you see how the water kind of creates like um, almost like a watercolor effect. I really love that. Watercolor is one of my favorite Favorite medium, so it's kind of fun to treat the acrylic paint like watercolors. My friend saw two foxes yesterday uh, in the foothills of Salt Lake. So it's cool to know that there's little foxes around. I haven't seen a fox in a long, long time. Although there was a moose in my yard this week. Walked right up the driveway into the backyard, probably like six feet away from the window. So it was awesome to just watch them. All right, getting down to the bottom, but can't forget the sides as you're going along. And you know, if you really like green or um, another color than blue, feel free to add it. The background is kind of a great place to freestyle. The fox is a little harder to freestyle, but the background can be any color. You can really be loose with it. Uh, 
awesome. So at this point I have, you know, some really strong horizontal lines. If you like that look, you can keep it. If you want it to be a little more solid of a color, feel free to keep going back side to side strokes. But I really love the way this is dripping. I think that's really pretty. So once I cover my sides, then you can let it dry. So letting this dry might take a little while, especially if you used a lot of water like me. So a couple um, drying tips. If you come to the paint mixer often, you know all about our super secret drying technique, which is just shaking it. Um, if you have a hair dryer laying around, that really speeds it up. Um, or you can kind of just sit back and watch it. But I'm gonna shake a little bit and then start talking about the fox. So I know you guys are probably shaking too, or maybe still working on the background and that's fine. But I find that it helps me to practice a little bit before taking it to the canvas. So the fox is really a pretty simple breakdown of shapes. So I'll practice it on some paper and then I'll show you on the canvas. All right, I'm gonna set this aside for now. Let that hang out. And I'm going to use, where did I put it? Can't tell, but it's very, it's kind of messy around where I am. So I'll just show you on this little um, butcher paper, kind of the breakdown of our fox. Because it's super simple, shapes that you, you're probably used to making. So I'll do this two times on um, paper, so you can kind of just watch, and then I'll take it to the canvas, and maybe by that time, you'll be pretty dry and can, can follow along. So definitely using the baby brush for sketching your fox. Gives you a lot of control, and it's really easy to make something bigger. It's pretty hard to make something smaller. So I am going to just show you here with some white and uh, it is the burnt sienna mixed together. And our fox shape is going to start with a heart. So you can think of the heart as his shoulders and body. And then on top of this, I'm going to put a little circle. This is my fox head. Now for the ears, on either side of that head. And foxes have this really cute little uh, furry, furry cheeks on the side, so I'm just gonna create little sideways Vs there on the side. And last thing, just a little circle, kind of like the hips. And let's see. That's great, I can just refer to this one here. <laughs> and then coming out of that, I'm gonna make a big sweeping tail. So the tail is gonna kind of overlap part of the body, but all really simple shapes. So I'm gonna do that again on the other side. Just to build some muscle memory, it always is good to practice, and you're welcome to practice on the butcher paper too. Recommend it. All right, so starting with my fox body, cute little heart, kind of a tall, skinny heart. Then right in the middle of the heart, we're gonna put a circle, fox head. On either side of this head, I'm gonna put two little ears. And the cool thing about this, it's just a sketch. Nothing is permanent, you can always tweak it as you fill it in. Then I'm gonna just, you know what, I'm gonna skip the circle and just go straight for the tail. Big fluffy tail. Okay, taking it to my canvas, which let's see how dry it is. Man, not quite dry. Maybe I'll give it a little shake. So um, if you have the standard kit, so that would be red, yellow, phthalo blue, phthalo green, white and black. You can make that burnt sienna color really easily. 
I'll show you here. It's gonna be yellow, red, and blue. Kind of um, counterintuitive, but pretty much when you mix orange and a little bit of blue, show you what happens. Doo -doo -doo. So I got my red and yellow, have a nice orange. Now I'm gonna add a tiny bit of blue, like super small. And then maybe a little red. And there I kind of have the same burnt sienna as in the deluxe packet. So the cool thing about color mixing is that it's, you know, it's not a perfect formula. It's not like baking. There's not an exact measurement. So you can kind of just experiment until you get the one that you love best. But I think orange, red, yellow, and then a little bit of the phthalo blue gets you our foxy color. All right, taking it to the canvas. Starting out with that burnt sienna color and some white. Now remember, this is just a sketch, nothing too serious. All right, baby brush. And starting again with our heart. So right here in the center, thinking about how tall your fox is gonna be. And you know what? It's always good to start smaller because it's really easy to make something bigger. It's a little more challenging to shrink something. All right, got my heart. I'm gonna use a bigger brush just so you can see a little better, but you will be using the baby brush. Awesome. Now our little fox head, just a circle on top. And it's kind of great, the center of the heart almost creates the little snout, the little nose. See how it comes down to a point? So it helps you, helps you with the shape of the face. Then we have two little ears. And our little cheeks that go out. Good stuff. Now I'm going to create my tail. And your tail can go on either side, really. But I like to do it sweeping across. Very fluffy and fancy tail. And then I think I'll put a little bit of body right there, just so it doesn't look like he's missing, missing any body parts. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a good time to maybe step back from your fox and kind of look at it as a whole picture. You may notice some things when you're further away than you do up close. But I think I'm feeling pretty good about the shape of my fox. So the next step is really easy. We're just gonna fill them in, just like a coloring book. And I think the majority of the color is going to be an orange. So red and yellow mixed together. Or if you have the, um, this little pack is going to be vermilion. And if you like the more neutral tone that we sketched with, you can use the burnt sienna too. But as you're filling it in, think about making your brush strokes kind of furry, right? So following the contours of my fox. Ooh, see, my, my blue is a little wet there. So now it's kind of green, but that's okay. The good thing about this paint is it dries pretty quickly so you can always layer on top. And sometimes it's good to have at least two layers because you can kind of build up the texture of your furry fox. And don't be afraid to experiment with color mixing. So I just added a little bit of black to that color and made it a little a little more mellow, a little more brown. So your fox is gonna be different than mine and different than your 
your brother or sister or your mom or your dad. And that's okay. If everyone's fox was exactly the same, it'd be really boring. So definitely celebrate the differences. And if you find that you're like, man, I just want a pink fox. Like, I just really like pink. I want a pink fox. Go for it. I think that would be really rad. And if you are running out of paint, refill as you're going. And you may find that filling your fox in is easiest with your um, larger brush. Does a lot more work than the baby brush. The baby brush kind of runs out of paint pretty quickly. And it's kind of fun too to have some contrast in your colors, especially when you're working with the tail that's gonna come over top of your body, right? So just by having a slightly different color, my tail is all of a sudden in front. So don't be afraid to mix up a slightly different color so that it separates the parts of your fox. Hope you guys are able to create artwork all throughout the week. I know you're probably missing being in school if you aren't an adult, but hopefully these can kind of be like your art class in the meantime. Okay. So I have my fox pretty much looking orange and gold and a little brown. There you go. And now we get to kind of add the cute little white parts of the fox. So check this out. We are going to be adding white a couple places. So inside of the ears, his little snout right here under his nose, his chest and the tip of the tail. So I'll have this back here as reference, but feel free to always look at your instructions if you're not sure where to add the white. But this is going to be with your baby brush. And make sure that baby brush is nice and clean. And if your uh, paint is still a little wet, you're gonna get some cool mid-tones. But right here in the center of my ears, I kind of left blank because I knew there was gonna be white going in there. So just filling in every little part that has white. So inside of the ears. Cute, and you can make them kind of furry, right? Then the next white part is going to be the nose. So think about doing a line right here in the center. And then from there, it's going to flare out on the top and the bottom. So now you can just fill in this middle section and all the way down to his nose. And this is a really fun part to add some furriness here on the top. Flicking the brush upward helps create those little furrier strokes. And if you lost, you know, your nose somewhere along the way, now is a good time to reshape it. And I'm not sure if the example has white out on the tips here of his cheeks, but I think that's really cute. So I'm gonna add it. I 
I've painted a lot of little foxes for my nephew's bedroom. It's one of his favorite animals, so hopefully I'm getting the hang of foxes. <laughs> It's kind of fun to look up an image of an actual fox for some inspiration. All right, so I have my face pretty much good with the white. Now we can come underneath the nose and I'm almost gonna do like a mini heart here and then filling in the center in with wispy white, kind of furry strokes. And we're going to go back in later with black and kind of outline the body and the nose. So you you just see how it might get a little confusing where your nose and your chest meet. But don't worry, we will redefine that in a little bit. But for now, you can kind of just put that white in there. Awesome. And last part, tip of the tail. Pretty easy. And then you can kind of start off really solid, solid white. And then as it gets closer to the orange, you can kind of flick your brush and it looks a little furrier, a little fluffier. Nice. Does anyone have any questions? Nobody has a question. You guys must just be crushing it. So also, if you do have a question, just remember you have to be logged into YouTube in order to add a comment. So don't be afraid to ask a question. I'm sure other people have the same one. All right. So I think it's a good idea to let this white dry a little bit before we go in with our black for the outlining and the legs and the nose. So you can maybe take a little fox break and think about the flowers you want surrounding the fox. So on our example, we have daisies, which are really simple, just white petals and um, a little golden yellow center. But I know you guys are really creative, so if you have a favorite flower, you are welcome to create that. But I'm gonna keep mine really simple and do some daisies around the fox while the white is still drying. So, starting with the petals, just gonna be some white, and just like a doodle that you would do in school, we're just gonna make little flower shapes. And there's no right or wrong number of petals, or really the shape can be kind of, you know, imperfect. Nature is pretty imperfect. I might do a couple more on either side. And this is good practice too for the flower crown on your fox. Pretty soon there'll be dandelions everywhere and you can make flower crowns. That was my favorite thing to do when I was little. That and catching fireflies, which I don't think I've ever seen a firefly in Utah. But all good spring and summer things. All right, so I got a couple daisies on there. Now for the centers, it's just going to be a little yellow dot in the middle. 
Now a little trick is to pick up some yellow and maybe a little orange on the brush too. You don't even have to mix it. It can kind of be a, you know, a little dab of both so that when you take it to the middle, it's like a two-tone. Looks really cool. Almost 3D. Cool. All right. And of course, some flowers need stems and leaves. So you can either mix a green, which are of course blue and yellow mixed together, or you can go ahead and squeeze out some green, whether it be phthalo green or the viridian or hooker green. So all greens will work, but then just kind of being careful to avoid your fox, adding little stems and a squiggling down. And then if that same green, my daughter, oh, I got a question. Oh, the question is, will this video be available later? Absolutely. Yes, so the way this works is we're live right now, but once um, the session is done, it'll be there on our YouTube channel. You can go back and rewatch whenever you like. So that's that's a pretty cool um, thing YouTube does. So this will be, this will be kind of free for you whenever you want. And also, if you ever, you know, want a little less screen time, you can always just look at the um, instructions. So both the video and the instructions are a good way to go at your own pace. All right, so just little um, leaves on the stems of the flowers. And you know, the cool thing about painting is it is, you know, pretty personal, you can go your own pace. So even though I may be going this pace, you can definitely go slow, pause the video and kind of come back whenever it works for you. So there are cute little flowers and they can go all the way to the bottom if you want. You can have them overlapping your fox if you like. Um, he can be in like a really lush garden, but I think a couple goes a long way. All right, so now we have our flowers. Our fox is missing some things, some really important things like eyes and a nose and some overall definition. So the one color on our palette that we haven't used yet is black. So this is going to be um, what we'll be using for all of our outlining, nose, eyes, all of that. Definitely using the baby brush and a little tip for the baby brush, especially with outlining, is to use a little water. So here I have my little do dollop of black, a little water so it's kind of inky. And then I'm gonna twist my brush like you're sharpening a pencil so that your tip gets reshaped nice and sharp. Because if I just you know pick up a big glob of black paint like this, I'm not gonna have a lot of control and I'm not gonna get a very fine line. So a little water and kind of twisting your brush like you're sharpening a pencil really helps for this next step. All right, don't be afraid of adding your nose and eyes, but remember start small. So for my eyes, I'm just gonna do either side of the face here. Starting out with just little circles. And then if you want your fox to, you know, maybe be a little fancier, you can add the little, uh, almost like an eyeliner. <laughs> and then I'm gonna fill it in. So eyes can also go downward like so. Kind of experiment maybe on the butcher paper if you're feeling nervous, but a way to make your fox cute again, right now he's kind of scary, right? <laughs> These really dark eyes, is to just take a little white on the back of your baby brush and just add a little sparkle in the eyes. So he's cute again. And I'm gonna give mine some eyelashes cause why not? I want mine to be like a glam fox, super glam. 
All right, so now coming to the nose, right at the very bottom of our snout, I'm gonna put a little tiny heart. Awesome. So my white is still a little wet, so it's kind of gray, but I can go back once it dries and add some more. So I've got my little nose, and he doesn't have any legs currently, so that's pretty important. Next step are some legs, some black paint again, and just think about doing two little legs on either side of your center um, kind of fluff. So maybe doing their little outline first, and then filling them in with black all the way to your tail. And I think they kind of flare a little wider at the top. So you can think about that as just um, as you get to the top, maybe taking your brush strokes a little wider. And same deal with how we flicked the paint on the tail. We're going to flick the paint upward. So it looks like the little um, black legs kind of dissipate into the rest of the body. Now, if you're going along and maybe something happens where like, oh, you make a whoopsie, I'll show you how to fix that too. So I made a, a on purpose whoops to show you how easy it is to cover up. So I'm gonna let that dry. And by the time I've done all the rest, I can go over it with our fox color. But just to let you know, like nobody's perfect. Um, Every artist I know struggles with their painting at least once. So um, just know that it's very natural to make happy accidents as you're going along. Alrighty, so I got my two little legs. Now we can start to outline the fox. So same deal with the black, and this again is where you wanna roll your brush. So that when you're coming along and maybe outlining you have a nice continuous stroke. You'll notice if your paint is starting to dry on your palette, you're gonna run out of paint halfway through your stroke. So a little water helps that paint stay fluid and a little inky so it's easier to get a longer stroke. And another tip here for outlining is you don't have to um, make it like really intense. It can be kind of wispy. And I like adding a little black to the tip of the ears too. I think that's cute. And still dipping my brush in water every now and again to keep, uh, to keep the paint flowing. And let's see, outlining the body, also important. So here's where you can kind of define the shapes. My fox looks very like, um, <laughs> he's a little chubby. He has little round shoulders. All right, and now outlining the tail. For this, you can, you know, make it a little furry. Like, doesn't have to be a really hard line. You can kind of flick your brush as you go. But this is important to kind of separate your tail from your body. So this line here helps to do that. Mm -hmm. 
Now is another great time to step back from your painting. See it from a distance. You may notice some things. We'll see what I notice when I put it back. Hmm. So, like I said, my fox is a little curvy, but that's okay. And I think I want to add a little more white and fluffiness onto his chest and maybe even on his face. So these are all personal preference things, but it's hard to notice when you're right up close to your canvas. So maybe set it aside and walk away, look at it from a little bit of a distance. And I promise you'll notice things you don't notice when you're really close. But remember this guy, this little whoopsies, he's dry now. And you can always test by giving it a little finger test. So if, if you have a little part you wanna cover up, all you have to do is first let that paint dry. Then you're gonna mix up your color that is surrounding it. So mine is that foxy color, that burnt sienna. And I'm adding a little white too. That kind of helps to mask what's below it. And just like that, that whoopsies is, is gone. So just know that whatever, you have on there right now can always be painted over once it's dry. If you have a little thing you're not super excited about. Now it's kind of a fun time too to go in and maybe add some more texture onto your fox, some more furriness. Now I'm coming in and kind of fluffing up my fox a bit with some more of that burnt sienna and white. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while you're getting it perfect, or not perfect, but to your liking, you can always go back and kind of tinker. Like I want him to have a little more, a little more white fluff on his face. And I think I'll even put a little sparkle on the nose, just like the eyes. Cute. Okay, we're kind of in the final stretch. So um, in the example, our fox has a really cute little flower crown. So you've probably guessed that it's going to be the same um, style of daisy you have around the fox. But you are welcome to make any other type of flower on there. You could do roses or like lavender. Um, but I'm going to just keep mine white daisies, real simple. So my fox's head, where the crown is gonna go, is all dry. So now I can go and just add some flowers. Same type as um, before, just little, little petals first, all around the head. Now maybe you wanna add some like pink. So if you want some pink, you can do red and white mixed together. Yeah, I'll put a pink on on here, why not? And I'm sure you guys already know, but um, if you want to make purple, all you have to do is mix blue and red. And a little bit of white also makes it a little more like a lavender. So don't be afraid to mix up some fun, fun colors like pink and purple or lime green. Do a couple more white daisies on there.
and the middle of the daisies. A little bit of yellow and maybe some orange too. Just dotting in the center. And look how cute. Love it. I wish I could see all of your foxes that are coming along. So actually, um, whenever you are happy with your fox, I would love to see some photos of your work. So if that's you, um, feel free to share on our Instagram, which is at the underscore paint mixer. I would love to see your work. Um, but as far as our fox goes, those are all of the step-by-step uh, -step instructions. But don't forget to sign your painting. Very important to take credit where credit is due. Initials in the bottom corner, keep it really simple. You can always write a message on the back if this is a gift for someone, maybe like a grandparent or a friend who maybe you can't hang out with on their birthday. This is a great present. So maybe write a special message on the back and it won't shine through. So keep that in mind. Um, are there any other questions out there? If you have any question, it could be like, what if you want another fox on there? That's a great question. Um, but really, that's pretty much it. I think, um, let's see. Do I want to add anything else? No, I like it. So definitely step back from your painting before you decide to put your paint away and clean up. But um, I'll wait a couple minutes just in case there are any other questions. But thank you guys so, so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your support and your creativity during this very strange time. And I hope that you're able to, you know, experiment and play and just stay creative indefinitely. So definitely look at thepaintmixer.com for other offerings, other little kits we're creating. I know coming up, we're going to create a um, sidewalk chalk kit so you can brighten up your outside too. So be looking for that and don't forget to post your, um, your photos to um, our Instagram. I'll write this in the comments too. It's at the underscore paint mixer. And we would love to see all your work. So thank you guys so much. This video will be available um, on our channel indefinitely. So you can rewatch. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Have a wonderful Saturday.